Good afternoon. We have a special guest speaker for you today. Please give a warm welcome to the hosts of My Gym Partners, a podcast. Attendance is mandatory. Bull shark, porcupine, I don't know what. Going to this school's a pain in the... Uh, Timmy Turi, Timmy Turi, Timmy Turi sauce. West Missouri, baby Surrey, Danza is the boss. 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 Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Monkey Show. We're all Jiminy Jipoopy fans. All of us. I am your host, Gert. And that's Renee. And... Who, who is that? Yeah. Uh, who the fuck is hello. that? Who let oh. that free oh. hey. out? Hey. Who let that oh. free? Security! Security! Oh, wait. No. Uh, uh, listen. I, you, you, you guys said if if I made the intro, then 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 everything would be okay. I could get out of the out of the out of the door, right? Like that's I don't, that's okay. I, uh, Renee, do you remember promising such a thing? I. I think I, I, I remember. I, it. Mean, I remember the date, and I remember the time, and I remember where I was. <laughs> I mean, I think Wait, I might have... who gave you a clock? You're not allowed to have any concept of what time it is. Security! <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Niall. It's nice to have you back on again. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, for those uh, who don't remember, I was on uh, this podcast before, and I was put into a trapdoor, and that was sort of a continuation of that lore. But now we're just sort of... I think we want to do a reboot of it. So let's just let's just start from the beginning. Yeah. Hi. Niall is just out and he's he's fine. Yeah. There's nothing uh, he's, wrong. He's okay. He's not in the trap door. He's yeah, I'm not friend. a car. I'm I'm just uh, I'm just a a friendly little pixie frog here to to to, to talk about the monkey show. Uh, also, uh, Lucy isn't here today uh, yeah, for various she, reasons. She's across the pond. <laughs> Yeah, she's, she's, so to she's, speak. She's across the pond, as Gert would say, apparently. And so, but the bo- the show must go on. The monkey show must go on, and we're here to talk about quite a monkey show. This th- th- these episodes were surprising, wouldn't y'all say? I am Definitely. surprised by them. I do feel surprised and shocked. So the last time I was on here. The episodes that we did were actually pretty like straightforward, and I felt very equipped to discuss them and to take notes for each episode. Um, being that a lot of time has passed, and you all have watched a lot of the episodes now past where we were, the tone is completely different. Oh, the, it's, yeah. It's just a complete nightmare at all times. I, There's I'm just not... sensory overload coming from all different directions. I'm not exactly, you know, that's a very interesting perspective for you to give, Niall, because we've kind of, at least I think it was gradual. Was it gradual, Renee? Was it kind of like a a slow descent into the madness that the show has become, or was it all at once? I, 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 I guess you could say gradual, if your definition of gradual is like, sometimes it's like a it's like a slow gradient like downwards with some like spikes of like different weirdness different episodes it it's it wasn't a smooth trip down let's let's tell you that but, to where we are today but i'm sure Niall, um from jumping to like a i forget what season you were on was it like the second season third season uh, i think so maybe uh i'm trying to think um, well, somewhere but it, was, it was fairly early on. It, yeah, it was somewhere up front. So, um, kind of describe to us, I guess, the the feeling, like the the change in like feelings that you had during your your watching, uh, of, like yeah. this episode. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, first off, the, the the first of the episodes we're talking about is Mandrill of the House, and a, the first like the first minute of it. There's so much that happens that I was not like physically prepared. So I, I, I don't know if people who listen to this watch the show along with the podcast just to see what we're talking about. But I would recommend watching these episodes for yourself because we're going to talk about like how crazy the pacing is. But you can't really understand unless you're like in it. I, 
I, I really, I, it, it's so hard for me to put into words just how like, overwhelmed I was almost immediately. We had to, we, we had to pause. I needed a second. I needed like a, a less second than to a breathe. Minute time frame. We go through like four or five different sort of like, I guess, perspectives that describe like all things that I think are pretty like important to the plot. It's somewhat. Ex- it, and yeah i, I would say so it's kind of nice um, i mean usually the show tends to drag on in the beginning yeah like you know we, we've we've been saying for like uh like a lot of episodes and even like the past few episodes that the the sort of like setup tends to like be more than the actual action and the, the like the driving like action of the plot there it's more setup than anything but uh, I th- I think with this episode they found like uh, I wouldn't say a balance exactly of that, but like they 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 front loaded it, and like I think it serves this episode well for what kind of episode it is. But like yeah, I, I, I think I, I think too. we should get um, into it. You know, uh, uh, now offering pilot whale flight, flight training. training. That is what it says on the sign. Um, big old whale are a teacher. Uh, what's that guy's name? Give me that guy's name. No, it's not him. He's just he's just a whale. Was, was it, it? Was so it not really Mr. Blowhole? Blow I mean, I it's it's it. Well, I mean, there was no time to know because you see the sign for like point two seconds, and then he crashes, and the joke's already um, over. You couldn't Windsor read it. Windsor is up in his locker uh, after after that that little bit, and um, he's looking at his collection of delicate cute glass animal figures and he goes i love you puss puss i love each yeah he he goes (laughs) exactly like that (laughs) i love each and every one of you except for mrs ladybug you annoy me um yeah just you know conversing with his collection uh, as we tend yeah his collection of glass amiibo yeah his collection of he's talking to his shulk amiibo (laughs) and he's like yeah he's like oh no, now it's rhyme time. I'm really <laughs> feeling it. But Slips comes in, uh, and Windsor doesn't want anyone to know about his like little glass figurine con- uh, collection because he was embarrassed. He doesn't have the glass box boy amiibo that's so rare that would complete the collection, so he's embarrassed. I would be embarrassed too. <laughs> I am embarrassed too, actually. Who has that amiibo? I will pay mm. you top dollar. No, you won't. You already... I will pay you ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, like, you know, in that instance, we we get new information, right? Windsor has, like, a little glass figurine collection. Cute, you know? Nice yeah, development cute. to his character. Uh, Switch. Mm-hmm. Instantly. Instantly. You're, you, you didn't even have time to say what you were going to say. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we're still yeah. in, like, the first 30 seconds. Like, this is this is all already, like, th- it's going to take us a bit to, 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 like, churn through we had, this, this we hefty even chunk had a, like, in the a beginning. We haven't even leaf swipe yet. Uh, th- th- this, is, right. this is young. This episode is young. <laughs> uh, Mr. Um, Mantrel is pushing out Adam and Jake, and he's talking about their relationship and how it's important to listen and communicate, uh, to, to, to see... And also to hear, he's giving them couples therapy. Basically. They're getting couples therapy, even though he's not qualified to, and says that he's not even qualified to be counseling at the school in the first place. Also, he's mm-hmm. not even like at talking about them. He's talking. He's he's asking them for advice. Um, he he, he, why... he just said that because like he heard it uh, from somewhere, and he doesn't even know what it means. He heard it from his. Special lady. Special lady. Special lady. You see so much of his gums and teeth. They do that thing that that, that they like to do. That, that monkeys monkey do. do it. Monkey, monkey, yeah, do that, it funny. You know, you know that big gum monkey thing? You know monkey big gums? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Mandrel thing. is very funny in the monkey on, on, on these two episodes. Oh yeah, I wrote here gay erasure. Um... <laughs> Because that's Do you know is. in what context that is? What, are you, are well, you talking about Mr. Mandrel? Yeah, it's gay erasure. What, what do you, what do you, no, like, you know, you don't, we don't have to say that. 
you know, Mr. Mandrel could be bi. We could, like, you know, I, recontextualize it. I guess that's true. Maybe I was a little too hasty. It's just, like, I don't know. It's It seemed like they were trying to make him straight, and I just got really, like, angry. Mm. So I had to write it down, you know? And that's like, important. And, like, I know, like... I know he could be bisexual, but the energy that he gave was distinctly straight. I felt it. Hmm. Well, you it's know, it, 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 like you could hear it in his laugh. Which, by the yeah, way, yeah, yeah, the, the laughs yeah, he, in this episode were very pronounced, they were, uh, they and were very sharp. strange, and 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 very like forceful. You can uh, so Mandrill, I think, does this laugh that's like I I, I wish I could <laughs> remember <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Yeah, like like some and and of... I think uh, Jake and Adam have a similar laugh too, where they're just like, <laughs> it, it's, it's like a... everyone in this episode laughs in this way, and it's not brought up. It's so strange. I didn't know if that was a common thing. I mean, or I not. mean, I mean, it's it's kind of leading into that thing that this season has been, where it's like kind of like self aware, meta contextual, like you know, they're laughing at themselves. Like in you this weren't show. here for it. You weren't here for it, Niall. Um, Renee, this kind of reminds me of the episode where they were trying to help out Miss Chameleon, and they were all... S- and Adam was so strange. Yeah, this like, this this was... definitely feels like that. I don't think he was as strange as that episode. No, definitely not. He was... He was Niall, if we like have the time later, we should we should show you how he acts in that episode because it'll blow you away as to how like just different he is he he seems broken mm-hmm. <laughs> but but he's fine here they're just you know they're yeah. laughing they're yucking it up uh about like mr mandrel having a special lady uh and windsor comes in and adam's like huh j- hey 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 windsor did you know that mandrel has a special lady <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh isn't that uh, funny windsor oh it's just really uh, funny that he's like dating uh, someone and uh, uh. sorry that was just windsor he was he was he was sad after that they said that he, windsor was in the studio with us <laughs> yeah windsor windsor you you reminded him renee and now he's upset i'm sorry i'm sorry windsor uh, uh Ups- upset because because Mr. Mandrel... We don't want to say it. You can tell we don't want to say it. <laughs> like, I, I, I was giving we y'all the opportunity. I, I, I was wanting Renee to say it, and I didn't expect such a pause. <laughs> uh, um, it's, it's, okay. Mandrel of the house. You, you get an idea here. But, basically, Mr. Mandrel is dating Windsor's mom. And they don't relent on telling you that he's dating Mr. Mandrel's mom. They, in fact, mention it quite a few times. Mr. Mandrel's mom. No. I mean, I mean, no. I mean, Mr. Windsor's Mandrel mom. is so dating So, Mr. Mandrel Windsor's is dating mom. Windsor's mom. Yeah, Mr. Mandrel. Mr. Mandrel is dating Windsor's mom. He's dating. Mr. Mandrel is dating Windsor's mom. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, very Mr. upset Mandrel, about it. I, I, this is a weird concept. I mean, like, I... I would hate this, too. Can you imagine if your guidance counselor, like, was just like, oh, hey there, Junior? Yeah. How, how Suddenly you is your stepfather or stepmother. How you doing, sport? I think I think, I think, think this episode is very interesting with this subject because, like, it's, it's sort of, like, a, you know, a more, like, real, like, grounded, like, idea that, like, some kids can relate to and it could be awkward. So, like, this episode could be, like, you know, it give them the tools to like figure that out or like you know oh hey i relate to this but also it's my gym partner's a monkey so yeah so they don't give you that well don't don't cut it off uh, don't cut it off just because it's my gym partner's a monkey i mean this is subversive this is taking the idea of like the nuclear family and it's smashing it apart it's showing that america is more diverse than just a single mother father and child in the family unit it shows that there's complexity to these situations it shows that your dad can be mr mandrel (laughs) in the next scene we find out (laughs) that windsor's mom kind of dates around 
Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Windsor is, is sobbing. That what's to be implied? Windsor is Possibly sobbing in the th- bathroom here. I, 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 I gotta list out this whole scene because it's gold. Miss Windsor is crying in the bathroom while well, he's saying "sob" out loud over and over, and mm, as Windsor uh, and does, they, and yeah. like he even remarks on this himself. Uh, so like they're like, "Oh man, uh, it must be pretty hard that your uh, your mom's like dating like a, a counselor, like a teacher in this school." And she, yeah, uh, sl- slips is like yeah, cause she's like so wicked hot, and take that back, take that fucking back. Windsor like bursts out of the stall. He like grabs slips by the neck, choking. It's, him. it's so violent. Yeah. It's so like powerful and precise. The motion. <laughs> he immediately grabs his neck. His hand was honed in on the exact location in which take that to back. choke. Take that back. And. Take that back. Okay, well, uh, she's not hot. T- take that back, too. He, he, I, I just... I think Windsor's actually pretty violent in this episode as a whole. I think he, he's definitely become unhinged emotionally. Well, this seems very he's, personal He's to He's him. going through, like, a hard time, like, with, like, his mom, like, dating, like, a, a teacher at his school. Again, apparently, because, like... Uh, P.F. walks into the bathroom and he's like, oh, hey, hey, well, Windsor, uh, how's uh, Margie doing? And apparently Windsor has a restraining order on him. So, uh, th- yep. Th- th- that's scary. Like, th- th- these are scary, realish concepts. This, th- there's, like, implications here that are, like, being brushed off. It's like, what happened? What's I- going on here? Which, uh, Is Pixie Frog, like, a bad dude? Is this terrible, terrible character development for our principal that we know and love? Or Maybe. Or perhaps, perhaps, and this is Now, what do crazy. you mean, perhaps? Perhaps. Principal Pixie Frog is just annoying, and Windsor doesn't want to be around him. I f- yeah, I, that's probably valid. I know it's valid. crazy, but... Because yeah. we love him, but Windsor might not, so, you know... Well, I see. I was assuming that the restraining order was for. His, well, because because like we've seen Principal Pixie Frog around Windsor before at that close proximity, right? Like that's happened before. Yeah. So I, I'm 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 exploring this cartoon moment in a in a in a in a larger sense when I probably shouldn't be, but I would assume that the restraining order was for his mom. Mm. That like that like Principal Pixie Frog couldn't I, get I, near her, and he I, was just bringing it up. I did kind even of though this is too. all just a a funny bit moment. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe, maybe it's it's kind of you know both. Maybe his mom it could be both. His mom, I, I've noticed a trend. Um, these men that his mother has been with, they are kind of they're strange little men. Um, well, yes. well, we can't get into, like, the, the men so much, because, like, we gotta focus on Mr. Mandrill here right now. There's there's so much plot left. There's yeah. so much more. Th- there's a lot. I, I I swear, it'll it'll die down later, won't it? it so, it's, not, it's not as heavy towards the so end. So, next the scene, book. I believe it goes into Mr. Mandrill is teaching about animal mating rituals? Yeah, like, it, it was preceded by, like, them, like, you know, hey, you know, technically he's not your teacher. He's, like, a guidance counselor. So, it's, like, what Adam and Jake are, like, saying. So, it's, like, all right, right? You know, and it transitions to this scene where he's, like, teaching about animal rating, mating r- rituals, right? And, like, he's talking about how he has uh, uh, a master's in animal mating rituals and specifically for lowland gorillas so he's Refer- middle school referring middle to school this is middle school by the way referring to himself as a love monkey no no, no. he's like an expert on monkey love oh uh, that's even worse uh, so so he's a love monkey <laughs> he's a love monkey I... he's the he's the love monkey somebody maybe we all need a little bit of help from the love monkey somebody has said love monkey in the show somebody has said what somebody has said it like it, it, right renee i'm not crazy to think that like that came to my mind for a reason are you are, yeah are, are, like something exists where the love monkey is like <laughs> assisting someone maybe in a different piece of media <laughs> the love monkey exists and we're all just look you're all talking about dinosaur some... you're talking about 2000s <laughs> like, 
I, I forget, like, what, You know, what I didn't it? realize it until... I, it, it's really sad that I didn't realize that was from Dinosaur until you said a different piece of media, Nile. Because I was like, <laughs> oh, wait, that's that fucking... That, that little pervert from Dinosaur. <laughs> Um, oh, now he's grown to a big pervert. His like descendant. Now. Here's Mr. Mandrel. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, he's talking about like animal mating rituals and like Windsor. Of course, is like at, upon hearing monkey love, like instantly falls over and gets a concussion. He's just completely paralyzed. Yeah, it, I. I don't blame him. I mean, this is kind of just... It's just horrifying. And then somehow we get into the next scene where it's uh, its its back in Mandrill's office, right? Mm-hmm. Or something like that. And Windsor's holding up something that I think is referred to as a bone? No, it's no, no. It's ice. It's, it's, it's an ice block. It's to, like, yeah. oh, soothe his concussion. Oh, okay, because I had a whole thing in my notes here. I guess I wasn't paying attention. I, where I, I thought it was, like... A wet bone that was like censored, because it's oh. a perfectly square block. Like oh. it's it's like a wait. it's like a JPEG, a white wait. JPEG. Why? Wait. Where did you hear bone? What? What, did, what are you talking? I don't know. I thought they was said something about a bone, and then I saw that it was like a white block, and I was like, oh my god, is this a censored episode on Boomerang or something? No. What? That, <laughs> I'm I'm really happy to hear. This like thing. they like they could like they they couldn't show like dead remains of an animal they, on the cartoon oh no. or on they, boomerang or something they, they like, showed I knew they'd done it before that's like a creepy pasta that's like little did i know for some reason the bone was censored i didn't think nothing of it yeah and and and, and you two weren't reacting to it and i was like oh wait, wait a second is this like a recurring bit that things get censored for no reason there's so much that i'm unaware of when it comes to these things that you two are just accustomed to you're just here and you're just like oh yeah you're just here and you're like wait what the fu- oh they're not reacting to it i guess the bone thing must be th- that's like normal, i guess it's I guess. just a joke i guess it's just a my gym partner's a monkey joke anyway are- they do the dumb laugh again at some point i have that in my notes <laughs> oh, but 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 yeah. I, there's this this scene and the ones like following it have some like pretty like s- stabbing lines from Windsor. Uh, Mandrill is like, oh, so how's the, how's the ice block treating you? Uh, you know, it's 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 fine. You know, other than them being a, a constant reminder, a pain, constant painful reminder that you're dating my mother. <laughs> <laughs> A very good line. He mentions this a lot. He brings it up a lot. Reasonably so, because he's, like, he doesn't want, like, older men from, like, his faculty, from the faculty of his school to date his mother. Which is the concept of the episode, which we're still, I'm still having to absorb. Yeah, we need to Look, 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 okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, like, go through it, all right? Let me bullet point it. Basically, uh... Windsor is like, you know, I, I hate you. I don't want you part of my life. But uh, Maurice, as he wants to be called uh, by Windsor, is like, oh, come on. Like, you know, uh, I, can, I can be a friend to you. Uh, uh, I can be your friend. And, and, and like, uh, it turns out, like, you know, he hears, like, a, a car honking. It's like, oh, that must be my mother. She must be here to pick me up. Actually, uh, your mother told asked me to pick you up and drive you home <laughs> god that's so weird like i mean it, it okay okay it's it's weird is it is it a spoiler to talk about like nah. the length of time that they've been dating that like windsor's a- well, 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 well let's 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 just get into it look let me list like all the things and then we can have all the data points where we can make our thrilling conclusion of this episode maybe you know what gert maybe you and i we need to just take a seat on the bench while renee gets us a, a bit more forward just because i i feel like i'm i'm sweating i'm, okay. I'm I, I feel i feel like i'm aching i feel a bit i feel a bit nauseous i may, maybe i just need okay, a second now. okay 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 um renee uh we, top us off move us forward Oh, well, well, I will. I, 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 let I, I, me I let me go need, ahead. I just need a second. <laughs> Never look back. I'm going. <laughs> 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 
Windsor and, and, and Maurice, they're in the car. They're they're having a, like an awkward drive, and like you know, Maurice is like, "Oh, this, it's, isn't this great? Uh, this will give us a time to like talk privately." And Windsor's like, oh, "I'm I'm glad I brought like my three friends here with me," and like slips Adam and Jake are in the back, just like kind of riffing casually, just joking, being laughing, joking numb nuts over there. I love how spacious his car is. Well, you know, like, like it kind of changes sizes too. Like yeah. from shot to shot, it's like it, 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 the the amount of seats and the size of the seats, as well as the size of the car itself, change I mean, drastically. It's, it's definitely a cartoon, like inconsistency thing. Well, like, like, keep in mind, house. we're watching it in like 1080p. We were never meant to see all of this. Oh my god! Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's why it was so long, and that's so why like, we can see like Windsor's like seatbelt hanging off of nothing. Are you, uh, you know, I never thought about that, that there was more background that just got cut I, out. I need to sit down. I need to sit back down. But, but, but yeah. I didn't think about that. I, that's crazy. Oh well, God. that's, that's a reality that, that, that it is. We, we should keep that in mind, but also. <sighs> okay. okay. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. To, I'm, I'm whew, psyched up. Let's. Woo! Whew, all right. Woo. Woo. They're, they're, they're driving in the car and, like, Maurice is trying to relate to, like, you know, oh, you know, my, my uh, car runs on, like, uh, strictly bananas. It's, it's like, you know, zero emissions. Uh, Jake jokes about farting or something. You know, emissions. Yeah, and, and you know, they all laugh. Like, they do the funny, like, overdone laugh. But then immediately after, they shift back to the pose of being just, like, bored. <laughs> it's, re- <laughs> it's really funny. They, they, There's, they... like... Half a second that they laugh and then they go back. Adam, like, tries to, like, relate them together. Like, hey, a- hey, Windsor, didn't you do, like, a thing on, like, uh, emissions and stuff? Zero emissions? And it's like, yeah, alternative fuels. Uh, all- people who use alternative fuels-, fuels are dorks, and they also drive slow. God! <laughs> and he's right on one thing. Uh, Maurice right on is a card-carrying thing. dork. Not only a card-carrying hobo, but a card-carrying dork as well. And God, he's got, like, a qualification for everything except being a guidance counselor, huh? What, wait, what do you mean he's a card-carrying hobo? <laughs> oh, that's, did, uh, oh! That's, that's, that's a canon fact about him. Yeah, he's, like, a certified hobo. He's what the hell of, does that mean? It means that he, like... He, I don't know, like, he, he he's got real. his GED, he got his, like, like the, the licensure... Uh, all ready to go to be a certified hobo, you know, riding the rails okay. and stuff. That it's it's unimportant to this. Basically, uh, Mandrel's trying to relate to him. He's listening to a song on the radio. Uh, chimichurri, chimichurri, chimichurri sauce. Bringing it back. Chimichurri, chimichurri, chimichurri. Yeah, that, that, that was in the beginning. If you were confused or uh, uh, nauseous from the the experience in the beginning, that was the a song that's playing on Mister Mandrel's radio. A Jiminy Japoopy song. Which, Windsor, he loves Jiminy Japoopy. Do y'all like Jiminy Japoopy? No. Do y'all like Jimmy Buffett? No. I, I mean, they're the you know. I, I know, yeah, but like. Same I, genre. I, I, same I, genre, I think. Not, not really. Has Jiminy Japoopy been in the series in the past? Yeah, yeah he, once, he has. once time ever. To, so this is used as like an establishment. Like, you know, Windsor loves okay, Jiminy Okay, because they were Japoopy. talking about like. You like, want to like, see the, him? This was normal. Uh. I mean, is he here? Um, I can show him to you. Just like, give me a second. Well, uh, yeah, sure. I'll just uh, I'll just hang out here for a second if you can go get him for me. Okay. Uh, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. They want to see you. Okay. I'm I'm kind of nervous, Renee. I don't know. Uh, don't worry. He's he's um, a regular person like any other. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So okay, he he's here. He he's coming. He's on his way. He was he just got through talking to the the McElboy Bubbers. Yeah, Dirt, you can't <laughs> talk about. Shut up. I, I will. I I Kurt, didn't say this any- podcast exists in a vacuum. There's no other podcast. They're gonna go to that one. Okay. Is um, that what he looks like? Yeah, that's him. Look, you, you just said that right in front of him, Niall. He's. Oh God! Now oh, he's crying. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I thought, <laughs> I, S- sir, I'm so sorry. No, I no. thought you were just a, a JPEG on my screen, but you're actually here in real life. I'm yeah, so sorry. Yeah, he's kind of human. <laughs> now he's crying. He's, he's uh... well. There he goes. Well, you know, th- there there goes our musical segment for the musical episode. 
Ah, oh, shit. <sighs> Dan's Look, I'm doing my boss. best. Dan's is the boss. Dan's is the boss. He's, uh, Maurice is trying to relate to, to Windsor. That's what's being established here. But, like, Windsor, like, even though he's, like, impressed by these things, like, uh, Mr. Mandrel is a backup dancer for, like, Jiminy Japoopy went on tour. Uh, it doesn't impress him. But finally, they pass Windsor's enclosure and they go to the Rhinosance Fair. Oh, that's an animal pun. This is the main like setting for the episode, by the way. So I mean, you're maybe looking at the, the, the length of the episode at this point. Maybe you're about, I don't know, maybe like 25, 30 minutes in. That's you not... realize that we should have been done with the episode. I, yeah, by now. I, I felt kind of sick just realizing that we still had a whole other like area to cover. Like the Renaissance Festival? What? I, I, oh, I'm sorry, the Renaissance Festival. Fuck me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, dude. Sorry, sorry. We'll get through um, this. Look, I, yeah. I, we got we got to get through it. it we, we, we have to stay strong. I mean, personally, I think, like, this works better than a lot of other episodes because, like, we, we get the feel like, the thesis of the episode is being reiterated in a way that's right. like you know works towards like meeting the end of it you know we, we're getting the point of it it's not just like meandering to like get to the the end of the setup to like re- meandering like some like weird plot line to get to like what the episode is actually about we know what the it episode like... is about it got set up pretty well and like now we're like experiencing it the awkwardness of like windsor dealing with his potential stepdad yeah <laughs> so anyway there so, everyone's excited to go to the rhinosaurus festival yeah, Were you everybody say um, you you mean the the rhinosaurus festival uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what because this is how they pronounce it the rhinosaurus uh, the rhinosaurus uh, oh, right right like renaissance that's, that's... Rene- right the rhinosaurus oh, i would love to go to the renaissance too bad. So what? Because I love okay, my. I really, I really want to talk about what the Renaissance Festival would be, but we do not have time. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Uh, now Windsor really gotta... loves the Renaissance Festival, right? Like, like we all do. But like, you know, he refuses to go because Mister Mantrel is taking them there. To, like they, they all have their like Renaissance outfits ready. Uh, Adam, Jake, Adam. I mean, slips. Jake, uh, Maurice. Adam doesn't. It's the one day he forgot his Renaissance like outfit under his clothes, so he's just yeah. So he just strips again. half naked. How yeah. many times yeah, the... do we have to see Adam in his underwear? I wish they would give him boxers or something. You think the tidy whities make it worse? I think the tidy whities make it so- like that. Th- that was a thing that I always hated in early two thousands cartoons. They would always. It felt like make the character wear tidy whities if they wanted to depict them with underwear, and I guess I get it. It's it, it, you immediately get across what they are, but mm. it makes me mad. It's more of a sign of embarrassment because yeah. they're kind of you know not the most flattering underwear. They're very like simple and bad underwear. Hey Renee, can I ask you a question? Did you think that we'd be discussing types of underwear in this episode? No. But I never expect anything from these episodes. What do you think about Tidy Whitey's, Renee? Well, I think no. that uh, Adam, like, uh, participates in some, like, uh, contests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, so he, he he's in this section where he's got a, a, a toss a pig into a cup, I guess. And Miss Warthog is there? Miss Warthog yeah. and, like, the little pig whose name I she's forget. She's got a part-time job, I guess. They're just sitting in, like, pans. Uh, so did, but, Adam tosses this pig. Did Adam toss Mrs. Warthog? Or no, no, just, no, she was he, already he, pre-tossed. He tosses a different pig. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, I'm just, I'm just saying because like they're, they're, they're supposed to be like the balls or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Someone else tossed them because he only get yeah. one shot. Okay. But, he okay. he's trying to get the prize. By the way, this is still the episode about Mr. Mandrel dating Winters. Well, it, 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 this is just a quick aside. Anyway, it's not even important. Uh, the real struggle is Windsor is in the car. Uh, Maurice told them, like, you know, hey, you know, I can't, like, talk with you privately, but check what's in the glove compartment yourself, and, you you know, you'll see what I mean, you know? Like, just, yeah. just check it as a precaution. He checks it. There's a little pink box with a bow on it, and he instantly assumes that this is a ring, 
and he imagines a scenario where uh, he's like going to propose, where Maurice is going to propose to Windsor's mom, whose face we do not see still, and Windsor is horrified by this. I. Why would Mr. Mandrel say like, like the way that Windsor imagined this going like Mr. Mandrel said I have a surprise for you. It's almost like he saw Mr. Mandrel as if he was like taunting him like hey I have something to show you. I'm going to I'm going to date your mom. I'm going to I'm going to marry her. Like it's a threat. Like it's a threat. It's like hey hey I'm going to fuck your mom. <laughs> It's like, no! What the fuck? Why are you doing this to me? Yeah, Ugh. that's that's the thought anyway. So, so, so Windsor's freaking out. So he feels like, if if I remember correctly, he needs to like get Mandrill out of his life by force. Yeah. And so we we get a, a visage of like the um, mud wrestling. It's like you know jousting, but it's like with like mud, and then there's like you know. They wear like rhino horns because it's a rhinoceros. Rhinoceros. It's very clever. It's very fun. Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros. Rhin. Rhinoceros. What? Why is? Why is this happening? Look, you know, I I put it here in my notes that I felt like this whole Rhinoceros fair deal felt like like a rejected episode that didn't get to be made into a different episode beyond this one because there's so many jokes that they put in there. That I, I feel like this could have stood on its own with a little bit more meat. They just made it like a thing. They they just made yeah. it like a a little like gag, mm. a side area. I, maybe to make this episode a bit more silly because it's kind of yeah yeah, <laughs> a bit yeah. Tense. like you know like just I think it, like it needed this like sort of icebreaker with like you know the subject of like. Yeah, you're dating my mom. I hate you. You're just, like ruining my life. Yeah, you know, you need a, a bit of a tension breaker there. So right. Windsor challenges uh, Maurice to like a, a joust, uh, a rhino joust of sorts. Uh, There's a point where Adam Lyon, during this rhino joust, he goes like, oh! <laughs> He, he yeah, because like, he's he's getting really into he, the the competition of the the Rhinosons fair. Like when he was throwing that pig, he was like really into it. Uh, and we get the final confrontation here as Windsor and Maurice must duke it out. Uh, and they're they're doing some old timey slang. Thouest if uh, thy whatever. They they get clad in their pristine armor that has like anime sparkle sounds when they put it on. <laughs> They have their they have their diamond armor on and they're about to um they they charge each other and they slide on the mud and there's about to be an an epic conclusion a, a collision of these two forces these two monkey monkey men and then they just kind of don't have any momentum and they slide into each other and... well, 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 well it's so that like windsor can present the the smoking gun that is like the little present that was left in the from glove the glove car. box in the car right, mr right, mandrel right. is worried like look look it's not what you think windsor don't like look don't open it here like you know that was meant like for you privately and he's like oh no i know i know what you're going to do you're gonna marry my mom that was the pr- that was the present to me you you sick fuck, wasn't it? You're gonna he's, marry my he's mom? Like, no, it wasn't for for your mom. It was for you. And it's like, oh, f- what what is this? Uh, but Windsor Windsor doesn't like want to hear it and just like slams into him with the full force of his neutral attack. <laughs> <laughs> Smashes into him, and he sees ah. Oh, it, it it wasn't like a, a ring for him for for him or his mom under there it was a little crystal swan that that maurice got for him because he knows he knows that he likes the little like crystal animals as he likes up. the delicate yeah. glass figurine amiibos <laughs> yeah he gives him he he it, got him he the got rare the, box boy god amiibo. fuck you beat me to it no <laughs> 
was going to say it. He's like, I, I know how much you like these, so I wanted to, to show it to you in private because I didn't want to embarrass you. But then all of his friends are there. And they're all laughing at him. But like, you know, they're like, like, well, ha ha, for box that. boy, stupid. But, but, you know, like, funny enough, like, in a way that this show, like, wouldn't usually do. It's, they don't, like, stay on, like, the, like, embarrassment part, really. But, like, they focus on the fact that, listen, listen, Windsor, uh, I, I, I wasn't going to marry your mom. We only went on, like, two dates. Uh, okay, but... this is where I get to it. Is it weird to let some guy that you've only been on two dates with bring your son home? Oh, I think definitely, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that's incredibly strange. I don't yeah, know that's... what like Windsor mom, Windsor's mom is doing. I mean, like well, she's probably no, like she tied knows up. that they have a connection. I, I, I guess though, so. right because he's the guidance counselor. That must you know maybe maybe the reason that she dates teachers is because she knows that she she probably knows them right. Like maybe she's part of the PTO. <laughs> Does Charles Maybe Darwin she's have part a... of the PTO. Does Charles Darwin have a PTO? You, you mean PTA? No, we called it the PTO. Oh, well. That... I thought PTO was like paid time off. <laughs> well, um... I guess it could be something else. It's a PT... the PTO, like the PTO, you know? Well, well it doesn't matter. You know? It doesn't. It, do- it literally doesn't. Really, actually. none of this matters. Look, in, look in the, in you're the all undercutting run. a tender moment here that I was trying to explain where, like, which, like, Slip, I mean, okay, Slip chimes in is like, uh, like, the reason, like, he dated her mo- his mom is, like, not just because she's wicked hot, yeah, not just because that, but because that she has, like, a wonderful, caring son who is very protective of her, and, like, he wanted to show... That he cares about that and like you know respects that boy's wishes and like showed that he cared with like doing all this give him that little gift and Windsor is is touched by this he, he feels very tender by it and, I'm glad that and they have then this closure then enters uh Mr. Hornbill I wrote here specifically and then we don't have to discuss it. I just said, fuck off, Hornbill. And that's, <laughs> that's all we need to say. Uh, apparently, uh, Windsor's mom has also at some point had uh, an, a, a moment with uh, Mr. Hornbill. And that's... um. No wonder Windsor's uncomfortable by this. If this started, yeah. if this started with Mr. Hornbill, I would be just like... Yeah, uh, no, I wouldn't trust anyone, like, from that school with her. Like, Jesus Christ, Mr. Hornbill. <sighs> but, you know, that. so that's that's how the episode ends, with, with Windsor showing the restraining order against Mr. Hornbill. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I'm just so glad that I was able to come on today with you two and that, that we're ending the episode here, since we've, you know... We, that that's that's all we have left. Yeah. And there's there's nothing else, because, <laughs> uh-huh. I mean... Yeah, there's, there's right... No we don't have a, another episode waiting in the rafters there looking at me. Waiting in the, uh, out backstage looking at there me. There is an entire second eye. episode. It's hungry. Which is just, I would argue, just as dense. It's. Um, it's strange. So, uh, no, we're not ending the episode here, but uh, we, we do need to move on. We do. Uh, Denza is the boss. Mr. Mandrill's dating my mom. Uh, what's the name of the episode? Bull's Day Out or something? Uh, hygiene Hijinks. Ah, Hygiene Hijinks. Now, now, I already forget, like, how I described this episode, like, uh, the, like, the last segment. But I believe that, you know, t- watching it, I think this episode... If it feels like an early season one, at least like the plot feels grounded, well, a lot more grounded than like other plots have been. I'm sure that's part due to the fact that this episode has kind of a, I mean it's bull centric and that feels very season one to me because bull was, um, you know treated as kind of a an opposing force in the first season, maybe even a little bit into the second season. 
Mm. Um, very get it's getting back to the its roots. This felt this. a lot more comfortable for me, I gotta say, compared to the first one, which was just a you know whiplash. This was a lot more of what I could expect from the last two times I'd been on. So I was, it it, it was a good moment's rest. A uh, reminder. That that being right. said, there's plenty of things in here that are that are just just wild, uh, for lack of a better term. I'm a scared. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so the episode starts and we get the perspective of uh, a camera recording of Principal Pixie Frog, who is doing some manner of, like, audition tape for for or some program. He, he for was, a Mr. Turner? Uh, yeah. As, as in Turner Broadcasting? For, oh, um, I didn't even catch rend- that. It's for a rendition of The Outsider. Is, is that real? It it sounds real. Uh, as as, as C. Hinton's the outsider. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I... he, he dons this outfit that has like a very like poofy haired wig and a black leather jacket. And he starts breathing into the camera's lens really long and really heavy. And, and, looks... and then says what Gert just said, which was, I'm a scared. <laughs> he's looking at you. He's crying. It's a very heartfelt performance. Um, but then Mrs. Warthog comes <coughs> on stage and is just like, Oh, can't! What? <laughs> <laughs> Paper bag! Um, just it makes it all overdone. Just insulting his his little performance. Uh, Mrs. Warthog comes into the camera and yeah. is just like, can't, Principal Pixie Frog can't act. That's that's basically what she's, she's getting at. And, um... What exactly was it that she came into the frame for? Uh, anybody... She was bringing uh, an attendance sheet about uh, how uh, Bull Sharkowski is absent for uh, ah. some manner of uh, vet visit. But she she notices that Principal Pixie Frog was doing some manner of audition. And uh, she says, uh, hey there, Mr. Director Man. My name is Jerry Warthog and my measurements are... And then she gets cut All off. right. All right. Um, and now... There's someone I I've said this before. I know I've said this before, but I there, there's someone on this show who has something for Miss Warthog here. It's too much. What does that mean? There's, you mean in the like the writers' room? Someone's in the writers' room. Really someone, into Miss so, Warthog. Yeah, uh, like a writer, storyboarder, any of them. Someone. There's one person. And it's like how there's another person who's, like, all for, like, the Mr. Warthog jokes. There's there's people in here who have a, a, an agenda for these characters. Now, Miss Warthog, I don't mind, you know? Like, you know, hey, you know, fine. Go, go ahead. It's a I'm, funny I'm just, bit, I'm, but uh, it, it, it seems charged. Uh, she wants and, to kiss you directly. Oh, yeah, she does kiss the lens directly, and then the camera explodes. Uh, because uh, it, it was not fond of that. But the camera uh, does not love her, uh, contrary to her belief. So, so then we we cut to the next scene, and everyone's celebrating because Bull's not in school today, so they don't get bullied, they don't get uh, f- physically hurt, uh, mm-hmm. because he and they're all just like they're they're having a great time. Um, Jake and Adam are riding a jet ski, I think. Yeah, well, as as they it, are want to do. It's it's more so. Um, Adam is perched on a jet ski, or rather a float, a flotation, an device, inner tube. And, yeah, an inner tube, and Jake is riding him, standing on his back. That's right. Yes. Um, they're having a grand old time. P- Principal Pixie Frog is driving them. Uh, they they crash into like a hunk of like uh like garbage that uh, a janitor is cleaning up this is like the first janitor yeah, a warthog janitor the first janitor we see besides like the ghostly ghost janitor like from the halloween episode which may or may not be canon but like here it is here here could be like the fabled reuben are you sure about that, that was Renee? what what do you mean i feel like there are more janitors i i, I feel like we have i feel like we've done this before no, no. Look, look. Like we've we've ta- we've people have mentioned that there was another janitor besides like the human janitor, but we haven't gotten to it until this point. This is the point. This is the janitor. 
We're at it. We're at the point. I'm like, the janitor's point. I'm, like, getting, like, the perspectives of people who have, like, sent in, um, questions and, like, comments to us about, like, janitors. And it, just future things are getting mixed up with what I've actually seen. And I just don't know. You both have been doing this show for a little too long, I think. I I, 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 I feel like... There's there's something I've lost as I've I've watched you two go across the years and across the universe to, to, to review all these episodes of my gym partners and monkey. They're my my friends. They're they've they've changed. They've become something darker. Apparently, no. the janitor has a um the, the the janitor that we see here has a section on the my gym partners and monkey fandom wiki. Oh really? What's his name? Janitor. Huh. It's just janitor. janitor. Janitor is an unnamed custodial engineer of Charles Darwin Middle School. He appears to be a common warthog. <laughs> having the same basic <laughs> appears shape. to be. Having the same basic shape of Mrs. Warthog. His only appearance was in Hygiene Hijinks. He is voiced by Tom Kenny because of fucking course he is. <laughs> I wanna I'm gonna look at the list of all the characters of fucking no, oh, there's too many. Don't. We're going to be here all day. Uh, they they crash into a pile of trash, Adam and Jake. And it's in this instance, they're having so much fun. Everyone's like hooting and hollering. And of course, who would show up but Bull at his at the celebration of his departure? Yeah. Every, everyone immediately just gets the fuck out. Just they they know to leave. Because apparently Jake describes a, a, a scene pat in the past. Ripple dissolve. Ripple dissolve. Ripple, ripple dissolve, dissolve. Ripple dissolve. Um, where it was the running of the bull. It was the first was like, impact. Um, <laughs> there was a cataclysm in which bull was involved that caused the near extinction of every creature in Charles Darwin. And now the entire school is on the verge of ruin and um look 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 Gert I'm 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 taking you aside here. Hey Gert You're not gonna let me do the Evangelion joke. Look look I'm uh, I'm not saying you can't do the Evangelion joke. <sighs> I just feel like just... maybe there are people out there who will who will get it, you know? I know you don't. Oh, that's, hey, yeah, like that's a problem. Hey, like, hey you know, guys, is everything okay? <laughs> No, no, no! It's all good, Niall. Okay, because you just kind of left just... me over here at the table. I don't. I. I, I can't uh, keep. It's okay. But, but... It's okay. You just. Um... I'm kind of scared. Don't. We'll, we'll, ju we'll just be a moment. There... Don't worry. If you look... you're not you're not going anywhere. If you look um towards the middle left of the long table that we record at. Okay, I'm looking. You'll, fi you'll find an abacus. Just play with that for a little while. Um... Oh, oh, cool! Check this out. <laughs> okay, he's distracted. Um, so anyway, I'm just look, trying to get back to. I want to do the Evangelion joke. Like, I know, I know. Look, you look, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, you know, without Lucy here, like, I don't know if Lucy, Lucy knows about Evangelion. Lucy but, does like, not. That's kind of why I'm. <laughs> I mean, she would never let me do this. That's why I'm doing it now. Well, well, stop well I can't. Immediately. Well, I can't. I can't let you do well, this. I just joke. thought you would be cooler, you know. So that's thirty-four. I, I, I'm just times. saying. It's like you know, we gotta work with the dynamic here. We we gotta be like a comedy trio. We we gotta be on the same page, and I can't be on the same. Why page don't you as be Evangelic. on my fucking page for once? Why do I always gotta be on your page, huh? <laughs> hey, this, um, we don't have get, the time, uh, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah no. I, I come in and I'm holding a little blankie. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything okay? <laughs> Everything's oh, it's, fine. everything's, everything's fine. fine, sweetie. Um, we're just let's we're just getting our um we're just getting our bit in order. Um, oh, okay. Did, did you have fun with the abacus? Yeah, I did. I um, I, I, I did a addition and subtraction. Is that what an abacus does? I put the I blanket know. down. Is that what an abacus <laughs> does? Yeah, yeah. It's just like I, I don't know why abacus was the first thing that came to mind for this bit of a funny. Object this bit's to gone too it. long. It has. Can, where were we? Um. Anyway, the running. The of running the of the bull. The running of the bull. Um. So singular. It's and uh, just... so everyone is dressed in a very specific attire that would be appropriate to the running of the bulls, and <sighs> Jake says. 
Es el Toro Sharkowski no me gusta. Uh, yeah. I understand that. I think a strange thing that I noticed about this episode, and I don't know if, like, y'all feel this too. Uh, I'm not used nope. to Jake feeling fear towards Bull, because it kind of didn't feel like he did that. Well, I think he time. did sometimes, you know. Most like of the I think time, it was though. more so that like Adam took the brunt of like bulls like bullying, so like he didn't have to worry as much. But like, you know, there would be times where he'd be like, "Hey, Adam, we gotta leave, Bullsharkowski," you know, yeah. and like he would like sort of leave him to it. Well, that's true. So that... But um, I mean, I guess in this context, um, of having this flashback. I guess I understand why he would be afraid, considering he gets mauled by Bull in this flashback. I'm, we do see that happen. I'm glad we could investigate that mystery now. Uh, but Bull's back, of course. This is all, like, you know, Bull's back, and he's got human teeth. Yeah. He doesn't it's, have braces. It's, it's scarier. He's got these yeah, big, I, big, blocky teeth that are just pristine and straight. It's, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, I would say this is scarier than like a shark with like braces. A shark with like human teeth. I would not like that. Imagine, imagine a real live shark with big molars. I feel like it would like crush my skull in those mo molars. It would. I it would hurt so much to get bit by something like this. Like a... A shark bite... I mean, I've never been bit by a shark before. Don't, now, don't say anything that might, like, you know... Uh, like, say anything about shark bite victims. We... I, I will say, we are dangerously close to an Animal Facts corner, and I'm not sure how much further we can go without doing the jingle. Um, um, I mean, it would be cool. We haven't done one of those in a while, Renee. Oh, we, 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 all right, all right. What if right, we played right. both jingles at the same time for Gert and Renee? Just overlapped on top of each other. Go ahead and play that. Animal Fact with Renee. Y'all never uh, even made me a jingle. Uh I'll I'll make you a jingle. But, but what, what, what do you even want me to say? What do we What do we? I don't even know. Say? I just I, I I don't get to be on here a lot of times. I just wanted a I just wanted an animal facts corner. Well, I mean, like the the interesting thing to say that I can think of right now would like spoil the ending. Okay. So let's keep it going. All right. I can't then, believe well, this shit. I can't. It, I don't get anything. Well, <laughs> just to hold you over, it's not a fact about it's. It's not a fact about sharks, I'm sorry, but it is... Okay, well, play the jingle again. Play both the jingles on top of each other one more time really fast. <laughs> it's something interesting, at least, about a certain marine animal. Did you know that blue whales are still the largest known living creature that's ever been on Earth? That's ever been on Earth? That's, you know what? That's great. Yeah. Like, See, that's all I wanted, Renee. That's all I needed was just yeah. a quick little little moment. I, I didn't actually know that. Like, I figured there would be something that would would have been bigger, but no. They're, they're the largest creature that's ever lived on Earth. Isn't that wild? Isn't that cool? That is wild. And that cool. That is cool. You know what? Thank you for that, Kurt. Thank you for taking the job off my hands. No problem. Um, so yeah, Bull has human teeth. That's the idea we're getting to. Uh, he, but he's friendly somehow. He, he's like, oh wow, you're doing a party for me. Oh, that's still so sweet. Oh, he's like me. Um, the reason he's like this is. Mostly because he's so self-absorbed with his own, like, looks now that he feels no need to, I guess, harass and bully and destroy um, all the... This concept didn't feel super strong to me. Like, I, I, I get that it's, like, there's a shift 
in bull because of his new look because of like the like the gaining of a new comfort without the braces but i didn't really like they didn't talk about it very much they were just like oh bull's different now yeah yeah i feel that yeah but i think but i think it works still like they're, they're, like there's a new like di- dimension to bull's like character in this episode i think with like just you know not being like a threatening predator but still being him he's there's stuff there's something to it that i like that's not just like other like oh this mean character is friendly now episode there, it's it, it's it's kind of like he's still bull but he's just lost interest well, well, and and well okay we'll, we'll get to it he's still sharkowski any anyway <laughs> uh so if your life depended on it would you kiss mr hornbill no Nile? No. Your 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 I, life depends on it, yeah, Nile. Nile, you're I know going to die. On it. I know he's a rhino. I just had to I had to think about it. I Yes, I would kiss Mr. Hornbill if my life depended on it. Okay, I guess you know, I didn't really think about the gravity of that. I just said no because I dislike Mr. Hornbill. I guess I would have to. Well, it's your life, you know. Like you don't you like, you, you have to do it. Like live No matter again. the circumstance. Like, can you, can you, do it to live another day. Can you believe it? Can you, can you, can you, Mr. Hornbill, are you hearing this? Oh, oh God. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's... So, so that's, right, that's a thing right, that... Right. Like, you gotta kiss Mr. Hornbill or you're gonna die. I would not do it. I you would wouldn't die. do well, it. Well, you wouldn't. Your I whole would life... No, I'm. your whole life you would lose all of it. Because you wouldn't kiss Mr. Hornbill on the mouth. Okay, so yeah. we're adding that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, well, I mean, I just, I assumed. Hmm. This is a question that Jake asks Adam in the bathroom, by the way, while he's washing his own ass. Yeah, while he's, like, slapping his cheeks, washing that. That's that's a, that's the reoccurring joke this episode. And I think it it's, it's a weird one. It's a fucking weird one, that's for sure. It feels very middle school to me, though. I'll say that, because this, this is the kind of dumb conversations I would have in middle school about, like, oh, would you do this gross thing for this reason? And, like, there's no, there's no meat to this conversation. It's just a funny thing to say. <laughs> it literally doesn't accomplish anything, this conversation. It's just like, here here we go. Um, haha. But, but, and, right. the, and this, this is just a buffer to lead up to, like, Bull, like, smashing in the door. It looks like he's gonna kill him. Ah! Oh! Jake hides in Adam's pants, and Adam I'm says, gonna "I'm gonna die with a monkey in my pants." I'm gonna that's gonna that. die with a monkey in my pants. Mm-hmm. That's honestly, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say best line in the show. Best I, I'm, line I'm, I'm in the not, show. Best. I'm line. not gonna th- th- justify it. I'm not gonna argue it. Best line in the show. And you'll probably anyway. change your change your views on that after probably. the next episode or the one after that. Um, but anyway, so, like, Bull's, like, he, he's showing that he's nice now. He wants to learn how to, like, uh, open doors without kicking them in. He's just, like, enamored with, with himself. Dang. He's, he's, he's Bull, super chill. Bull be, like, Silent Hill Homecoming, Alex, smash door open. Y'all know what I'm talking uh, about. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I played it, but, like, the, yeah. the, it doesn't have any weight um. here. <laughs> but, like, Bull also, like, while, like, he he's, like, nice, quote-unquote. He's not, like, hurting anybody, except, like, you know, he insults Adam's fashion sense with his burlap underwear. Keep saying it's, like... A, yeah, which was kind of weird, New but, Jersey. you know. It's only, it's only a thing that you would see in New Jersey. God. That's so funny. Isn't that hilarious? God. New Jersey. Yeah, by the way, if you're from New Jersey, uh, I, I'm i sorry. Uh, because you've probably heard these sorts of jokes over and over from various cartoons and various other media. And uh, I, I know that probably sucks. But if it sucks in New Jersey, then that's, you know, something I would actually want to know. I mean, I, don't know I, I can't speak for New Jerseyans, but as, like, a Floridian, Florida jokes always, like, they... They, 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 they get to my funny bone. I, you know, I welcome Florida jokes. This place sucks. It's a nice don't place live to here. visit. Yeah, you can visit it, but don't live here. 
Oh, is wait, is, is this is this an animal facts corner? Go ahead and play the God, jingle you can't one more do time. It. You're, you're... Okay, Renee, just say what you said again. You can't be abusing your power. Anyway, uh, animal fact corner. Uh, living in Florida sucks, except if you're an alligator, I guess. You're... Well, you... I don't know. There's like hunters, poachers, whatever. What? Nice. How many? How many of these do I have to do? I I mean I don't know. I just but but you said a fact. You're Renee and you're an animal, so I just. <laughs> yeah, I guessed I did. All right, I'm I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about animals anymore this episode. That's gonna be very hard. Yeah, I don't know if you can do that. Well, I'm gonna do it. Well, okay. Anyway, anyway, so Lupe, shit. Yeah. Well, okay. Play the jingle again. So Lupe. She, she, she asks Adams like, "All right, you already said that you would kiss uh, Miss Chameleon, Mister Blowhole, and Slips." To which, like, Dude, Slips what? is like surprise and shock. But would he kiss if his life depended on it? Ingrid Giraffe. Ingrid and, like stands to attention, is like looking at him directly in the eyes. Say it, Adam. <laughs> come, come on, we just. You know, like I, I just think you know it would be nice. Like you, you should, you should like answer it. It's only fair, Adam. This joke is it's really only... funny because she's so aggressive towards him, and like, I, it, it, at some point she gets the the sort of like conversation gets interrupted by Bull, and yeah, like Bull's joining in to eat with like his nice little salad. Like, uh, he seems like, you know, buddy-buddy. He wants to be called virtual. Yeah, he just seems yeah. like he's a super chill guy, just wanting to hang out with the, the usual crew. But then Ingrid's like, shut up, Adam! <laughs> Adam! Can it, I, I, I don't know! I forgot! I <laughs> Adam was, like, terrified. Forget? He's shaking. He's, he's just so sweaty. This isn't fair! It's not fair! <laughs> and then Ingrid just starts running around the room. Ingrid, I think, like, the... slaps him at one point. Yeah, she's like, finish your yeah. thought! <laughs> finish it! It's, it's, it's a good sequence. They spend a I lot think... of time on this joke, which, uh, it, you know, I, I had mentioned for the previous episode that it's worth a watch. I think this seed for this episode is definitely worth you actually watching it, because the, the comedy in it is, is kind of hard to describe. But... Yeah. Um, but this brought up a question to me with, with, uh, with Virgil entering the room and sitting down with the team. What if we replaced Ingrid with Bull? How does the show change? Is it a better show? Is it a worse show? Hmm. Uh, well, I'll tell you. It's a misogynist show. I'll tell you that for free. Oh, so... Bull... I'm, all I'm That's saying fair. is... I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just conducting a survey. What if like Ingrid was like you know out of out of Lupe and Ingrid like Ingrid was the stronger female character I feel with like you know more development and like you know like episodes dedicated to her what if, more episodes than Lupe what if Lupe and you was, just want to take that away from her what if Lupe was <laughs> so you're out? You, well oh well that'd be fine then okay I'm gonna go ahead and write all that down so Virgil for Lupe okay. Virgil for Lupe. And we have no problems uh, with this. Uh, I don't. No, yeah. no, nothing bearing mention with the fact that we're replacing Lupe specifically. Nope, nope, nothing. Okay. Uh, the next shot begins with uh, Mr. Hornbill nearly completely naked, covered in mud, and holding a torch. God, it's such uh, a great... You see? You see what I mean? It's yeah. A, it's, it's such a good thing for us to immediately go to. It's it's there's no like there's no like establishing shot. This is your establishing shot. Is the entire screen is covered with with Mr. Hornbill covered in mud and holding a torch. <laughs> and he's talking about how if you cover yourself in mud, predators cannot use their infrared vision. And in the seats of the classroom is the predator from the Predator series of films. It's true. And he says he says it's true. You know, when I first uh, saw... Gotta love those pop cultural references. When I first saw what? this... When I first saw Predator sitting there, I was like, oh, okay, um, so it's gonna go back... What well, When we go back to the class, like a view of the classroom, we're not gonna see him anymore. 
No, he's he's there. Entire of the he's, scene, he's, he's, he's there he's, sitting in a chair, and almost like every shot of the the kids sitting there. <laughs> the predator <laughs> goes to Charles Darwin Middle School. Well, you know, he's he's like probably doesn't have like an alien school anywhere. Like this is probably the best like his parents could like get him into. He used to uh, go to an got- alien school where everyone was the same. Now he goes to an animal school because Predator's his only name. My gym partner is the alien from the series Alien. <laughs> Then the little, uh. and then like it's like, um, you know, the same thing, same thing. A bull shark, porcupine. I don't know what. Going the school's a pain in the, and then like, um, predator, pre- and then like, predator. But it's like the little mouth that sticks out of the alien's mouth that says mm-hmm. that instead of Jake. Oh, funny. And then predator says it's true, and then the rest of the theme song. Uh, but that's a different show. Um, that's not, that's not what we're here for. But, uh, so, so Virgil's in the classroom and he is just, just completely like decked out in, in this awesome, uh, preppy ensemble with, with the complete swoopy hairdo and the, the, the sweater and he, he, he looks great he's, is what I wanted to say. He, he's got a good look about him. He seems to just be full of sunshine he looks like his dad owns a golf course. He does. I uh, listen. I, I I wanted to go into this with a bit of positivity, but he does look like his dad owns a golf course. That's all I'll say about. And that. that's those listening probably know the things we mean by such a statement. But he 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 looks very preppy. Um, and it's at this point where Bull's talking about how mud is good for the skin and it's good for, you know, your pores and everything that I realized, oh, that's why the episode is called Hygiene Hijinks. I, oh. That was the reason. It's because Bull is getting hygienic and that's improving his mood. I did not realize that up until this specific point. The whole time I was like, is this going to be an episode about, like, being gross? Is this going to be, like, a gross-out episode? Is that what I'm in for? But it, it really isn't. I, I mean, like, I think I still think there could have been a better title. I yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, they didn't have to go with the alliteration, but I mean, I love I love alliteration as much as anybody. Yeah, but uh, they shouldn't do all, it if it all... doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, true. I mean, there were anyway. f- there were a few shots where we, I guess that was why you realized Nile, um, really detailed skin shot of Adam. Yeah, they they do do that, and it's yeah, not great. Yeah, like, there, the, the uh, bull is like full on going like into like Adam's appearance. It's just digging on him, his like looks, his fashion, everything about him, because like he's like shifted from like a, a jock style bully to a prep style bully, mm-hmm. which is just as, if not even more, like damaging. So, at least, like, Adam is the only one, like, receiving the full brunt of this. So, like, no- nobody else is really, like, s- like s- worried about it. To be fair, though, is Virgil wrong about well, okay. Adam? Well, no, Look. he's not wrong about Adam. Because the things that he makes fun of on Adam a lot of times are actual fashion trends that are not super duper appealing in the modern age but adam lyon is also a middle schooler it's okay for the boy to wear cargo shorts i suppose so it's okay for him to have that haircut and just this plain yellow shirt anyway we're but but for adam lyon as a design i can't help but you know, lean towards bull there. Look, I'm just saying as a design. Yeah. As a design. So what what I'm gathering is that we need to get Adam Lyon on Queer Eye. <sighs> oh my god. Ah, uh, maybe. I don't know. We're gonna help I... you. All you have to do is is make this really fancy food for yourself every day. And change all the furniture in your home that you're comfortable with, Adam, and then you will be new. You will be only then will you be happy. Only then. 
I mean, what about some some money? Nah. No. No. No, we're just going to publicly embarrass you on a TV program. Uh, but so we cut again to the bathroom where they're Adam and Jake are cleaning each other again. And Jake says, OK, so would you kiss me if your life depended on it? And, and he, he like clenches his face. He's like looking intently at Adam the whole time. And Adam thinks about it. And I think he says yes. Yeah, he does. He's, he just says, OK, fine, Jake. Yeah, I, and Jake I, gets excited. Like he's smiling. Like, oh my god, he said yes. And I thought that was a fun little moment. I just really like the idea that like he he says like yes to all these things, but for like Ingrid, he can't even like lie and say yes. He he has to hesitate. For, he like, he hesitates so much, but Jake he's like, no, I would, I would. Well, you know, it's just Look. boys being boys, just boys talking in the bathroom, just boys. Boys insulting each other's fashion sense. You know. Yeah, because Virgil walks in uh, complete in his new ensemble and just starts destroying Adam at every turn, every aspect of his outfit, his looks, and and just it, I I don't remember the specific things he says. I think he compares him to a bratwurst he, at some point. He does. Yep. He says he looks like a bratwurst. Um... You, you, you look like you you wear uh, Mr. Mandrill's dad's clothes, and of course, who would hear it but Mr. Mandrill's dad? Mr. Mandrill he t- tells him, you know, well, you can go wait in the car, pops. We got this like <laughs> d- decrepit old Mr. Mandrill like figure. It's got ska shoes. Oh yeah. But uh. It's actually fortuitous that Mr. Mandrill is in the room because he hears everything that they had been saying to each other. Because also Adam says that, like, oh, you dress like my dad to, to Virgil. And in, in which case, you know, Virgil says, oh, you dress like Mr. Mandrill's dad. So Mr. Mandrill's so like, OK, this isn't fault. healthy for anyone in the room. So we need to talk about this. So he takes him to their office, to his office, I mean, um, yeah. to talk yeah. about it. Classic, classic guidance counselor like thing, you know, struggling in like middle school with like fashion. This is why like uh, a thing that's like uh, always been said like by teachers like when I like talk to them about like the uniform policy has always been like you know it's so that like uh, kids don't insult each other's like fashion sense or feel like they have to like get like like better fashion or whatever because. Like, you know, if everyone is the same, no one will be. <laughs> <laughs> like syndrome? Wait, huh? <laughs> did you? It's... So, yeah. Renee, did you go to a high school that had uniforms? Yeah. Yes. Huh. Really? I mean, like, like, it was like a polo shirt. You wear, like, a polo shirt and, like, a specific kind of pants. But yes, basically. Strange. I, I, I didn't have that. So, was it great? Yeah, neither did I. Did it work? I, I mean, like, uh, they let me wear my, like, black, like, hoodie that I wore every day in high school in Florida. Because I'm a freak. But yeah, you know, it worked out fine. Renee, you're not a freak. Ah, oh, thanks, Nile. I need to hear that. You're not a freak. No one uh. thinks you're a freak. But but Mr. Mandrill thinks that Adam is a freak. Yeah, uh, just... he compares uh, Adam's fashion sense to that of an escaped mental patient on a fixed income. Like that, that's not Jesus great. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Who's? It's not good writing here, folks. I don't. It's, I'm not. I'm not here for it. That's a little much on that one. Yeah, I was um, here for the New Jersey. Because, you know, what, whatever, I guess. But man. So, so, so Adam can't get even any solace in this meeting. But then Mr. Mandrill brings up that, oh, you know, Bull, you're going to have to get your braces back on. He's like, what? And Mr. Mandrill says, well, because, you know, sharks grow multiple sets of teeth. So your, your next set of teeth should be coming in like any second now. And he looks at his watch. And for a split second, you see this watch. I noticed that the hands on the watch were two bananas. Well, that's cute. I thought that was a cute little prop, and just Got wanted to to, to bring that to attention. They could have uh, just but, made it a normal watch. No, and so it's it's a it's a cute little banana watch. But then, uh, bull's teeth grow in, 
and and replace his beautiful uh, human teeth that he had with these razor sharp crooked teeth, and and he's on his way back to the vet to to get rebraced. Uh, yeah, and he uh, he goes to the vet, and it's a it's a it's a Frankenstein like situation. The the lighting's all moody, and uh, he starts cackling as he looks at himself in the mirror. The mirror, re- rebullified. The mirror. <laughs> Something that says he, it like that. He says he. This, he needs to see what this, he looks like. This poor little veterinarian. It's, it's he had to just do like dental surgery on a bull shark. Would it be wrong of me to say he looks kind of like a human Bentley? I'm not. I'm not touching that. Hold on. You sure, not, Renee? You can't. You can't get me like this. It's not. That's not mean, is it? I mean, I'm just. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not mean. I mean, no, if you no, look at them at though, all. like on but screen, on fu- screen right no. now, you can see that there's Bentley, and then there's the veterinarian. You put them right no. next to each yeah. other. Yeah. No. 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 I know what you're doing. I know what you're all doing. I'm not doing I don't anything. know. It's, I'm look. looking at the two pictures right now. Here's ben- you're all trying. To, you're all trying to get into my mind. You're trying to psych me out here but, but, while Lucy's gone. You think you can take over the podcast? But no, no, I'm too wise for you, Lot. I'm not. I'm not gonna let us veer off topic and talk about Bentley looking like this veterinarian. Hey no. guys, what do you think? Does this veterinarian look like Bentley from Sly Cooper? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, you I can't would really do this like to me. To know. I feel like I might have been correct, but you know, I don't know. No, no, no. I'm in control here. I am in control of this podcast. Not the other way around. Me! Okay, well then what else happens in the episode, yeah. smart one? So, it's the finale of the episode. The conflict is resolved. Uh, quote unquote. Uh, everybody, everybody's having fun. They're celebrating once again because Spool went out to the veterinarian that day. But, once again, he comes back with a vengeance. And he's got new, new, new dentistry gear. He's got new horrifying teeth with like even newer ones still poking out yet to come. He's he's back. He's and with him coming back comes the new uh, running of the bull, Ot six or like whatever. Or Ot five, just... I believe. Well, yeah. I mean, like they described Ot four before as being the last like running of the bull but like uh, i'm pretty sure this like came out around 2006 this episode oh i, don't know. I see no because uh, i i didn't i i'm kind of a dummy so i didn't understand what that term meant yeah uh, i i thought it meant just like that that's the fourth one that happened i i didn't know yeah no no nah, nah, it's like oh six or like oh four but yeah 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 yeah. is that uh, is that an animal facts corner with renee no, no, it's not. Well, I it's mean, not. you, you I just mean... told... I mean, Gert, you were here. That was a fact, and it's related to animals, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. Don't play it. I hear you. I hear you playing it. I, I hear the music. No, it's I can not. hear it Renee. fading in. I, no, no, get it. Get, Renee, is stop you're like, it. Stop all of is it. Is your, like, doctor... Is your, like, Mr. Hyde, like, self the one who's going to be editing this? <laughs> Just like I hear you, I hear you. Don't you dare put that music in there. <laughs> uh, anyway, Adam records like the this uh, running of the bull. Uh, it ends off with Jake getting mauled and bitten and saying "No me gusta, no me gusta." Like the meme. Like the like the meme, you know. Remember? No, I'm not. I'm not. Just. I'm not doing it. What am I doing Sounds here? like we need to be done with this episode. <laughs> We're almost done. I mean, done, it was an alright episode. Yeah. It was an alright yeah. episode. I, I mean, it was, it was entertaining. It didn't make me specifically angry at any points. No, I, I, I mean, compared to the first one, I believe this one was a lot more straightforward. A fine episode. A damn yeah, you know, fine I'd episode. Say, if you're if you're watching along, if you're watching these episodes, give this one a watch. It's all right, you know. Like it's not like anything uh, groundbreaking, you know. You get you get some stuff with Adam and Jake, like you know, a development of their dynamic. But you know, other than that, you know, not not much 
Not much different. Can you imagine watching My Gym Partners, a monkey, based on what we say? Like, our suggestions. Like, somebody, like, going through, like, every episode, but they only watch it if it sounds like we might have, like, had some kind of fondness for it. I mean, I think that's actually happening. Really? That's... That's kind of right blowing now. my mind. Uh... But anyway, uh, enough about the episodes. We've 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 spent some time on them, but let's spend some time. <laughs> we spent quite on, a long time on them. <laughs> on our lovely fans and their comments and art. Got some comments. <laughs> Woo! Comments. Let's let's go right into uh, it. No no art this week, but comments. All the same, and we love them all the same. Uh, we got we got a comment here from uh, Mir. I I, I I think I think that's right, right? Me, I, me. I read I read your thing. I read your your message on on the on the twitters. Uh, anyway, uh, Mir writes. Uh, There's a part of my brain that keeps insisting the notorious Windsor Gorilla is almost, but not quite, a commentary on the comp- c- the contemporary art market. Source, I am an artist of the fine arts variety. Ooh, wow, nice. cool. Fine art. Captain Corporate is not unlike the handful of mega dealers in the art world who have the power to launch a young artist into stardom, but who only a scant few manage to partner up with. Artists working with them can sell their work to collectors for millions. Then you get auctions where collectors, dealers, resell artwork usually for much more than the pieces originally sold for of which the artist doesn't see a dime often notoriety comes from what a piece sells for at an auction rather than the work itself uh gerard richer uh is one of the most resold artists in the world and hates it not because the auction houses make a pretty penny that he gets none of but because he fears what might ultimately define him will not be his work but what it is sold for. It's very unfair. I feel like maybe that's what they were originally going for when writing this episode, but then deviated from that idea because they wanted to make a Windsor episode or something? No idea. But those are some insider artist thoughts for you. I, I do think that, like, is buried in, like, the thesis somewhat in this episode. Uh, that I, sort of idea. I, um, I absolutely hate the idea of that like just all of your art only having meaning because of the amount of money it was made for that's like that's horrible that's that's terrifying coming from a creative standpoint that's like basically saying that you know your ideas your perspective the whole you know the the core behind art as a medium is useless that's not great. Uh, that's that sucks, but you know, that's that's the reality of the art dealing world, and it is shit. But I don't think that my gym partner's a monkey was exactly going for that angle. I think yeah, like a lot, but I think they were also like trying to like you know get too many slices of pie, and like you know uh, they were going into like oh fame, stardom, and it like destroys you, whatever. Uh, like, you know, uh, right. like, not, not just, like, you know, dealers, like, uh, like, uh, val- overvaluing a work and, like, uh, getting auctioneers, like, getting the more money than, like, the artists, but, like, just, you know, like, art, artists in general, like, getting the, the, the sort of shaft, like, in regards to, like, you know, the faces, like, the public image, you, you could make an argument about, like, you know, uh, like the grunt work of like you know artists like on on cartoon shows maybe like you know not getting the grunt work for like you know the icons of like the auteur or, or, or whatever so I mean there's a lot of ways you can read it but also you can just be read as a silly monkey show that like is just parodying other things and it's like a copy of a copy of a copy of other better things. Next comment. Next uh, comment. Hey. Shall, uh, I, shall I read this one? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
All right. This comment came in from Dirt Child McGee. That's a, that's a funny name. <laughs> I've got a <laughs> I've got a soft spot for both Ingrid and Windsor, and I'm sad these episodes are duds because I'm always up for more side character focus. End of Ingrid's episode was unexpectedly kind of sweet, though. That comment about Adam and Jake being a cut, cute gay couple got me oddly invested, lol. I saw someone on DeviantArt who ships Windsor and Rufus, the hyena, and like, valid? I too get, I too get far too invested in mediocre cartoons. Evidently, my wife clowns on me for it a lot. Looking forward to the next episode, kitty face. And the mysterious <laughs> musical special that sounds like a trip. I don't think anyone is ready to hear Hellman Jacob. Hellman Jake, Jacob. Jake. Jacob P. Spider Monkey singing. Uh, I'm I'm excited for that musical episode, but it won't it won't be for a ways away. I didn't even know there uh, was a musical episode. That's cool. I, I love uh, music and cartoons. I, I love when characters sing. I do too, but I'm sure sure they're like it's not gonna be as great as the other musical episodes, because it is, well you know. But anyway, uh, I, I I do feel you for that for like Ingrid and Windsor episodes. Uh, it's always a shame when they like don't really hit any well. But I I think for like this episode, the current one we we're talking about, uh, like the. I th I think that was a like as hectic as it was the like the Mandrel of the House episode was pretty good for like Windsor. I I agree. I really like them giving us a side of Windsor that's um uh, less neutral, more angry, aggressive. He's he's just so mad at the situation. He's upset. He's, he's taken out of his comfort zone. Yeah. And he's, he's, like, he's really addressing like, conflict. His, his character is being tested and, like, it develops. And you know what? That's always appreciated. So, Dirt Child McGee, there you go. There's there's something there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, these these last few episodes, like, there's been, like, lots of stuff with Adam and Jake, you know? Of course, it's, like, the that classic early 2000s, you know, just like, oh, gay, ho, ho, ha, huh. wink, wink, nudge, mm -hmm. nudge. Whatever. They didn't but, know, like, though. They didn't know that actual gay people would get a hold of the <laughs> show. And that was their downfall. Ah. Uh, much like like Spongebob in the past was like touted as a gay icon. We, we will do the same to all the, the characters, despite how terrible they are in the actual show. <laughs> Uh, Everything will be better. Uh, anyway, thank you, Dirt Child McGee. And, uh, Niall, how about you, as our special guest for this episode again, uh, read this last comment? Sure, I'd love to. Uh, however, I can't find it. Oh, wait, no, there it is. I'm sorry. I had, I had to look underneath my abacus. Uh, so <laughs> this, uh, this comment comes to us from Ryan Ribbity. Uh, and they write, uh, many, many episodes ago, I brought up thinking Adam Lyon was the villain of this cartoon. And I think across all of these episodes, I have only continued to think so. What an app, <laughs> what an absolute fool. Cannot <laughs> believe him focusing on his rancid looks instead of Ingrid the giraffe's feelings. I heard from cartoon. I heard from my Cartoon Network source that Adam Lyon would go to script readings and request for Ingrid episodes to be rewritten to be about him, or he'd walk out. This is why Ingrid is so underdeveloped. Unbelievable. I feel like oh, I need I to maybe apologize for my behavior earlier, as I as I brought up that uh, we, the the show could potentially be better if um, if Ingrid had been replaced. I do not truly believe that it was mainly a. Uh, mainly a a, a a a joke of sorts so uh i, I actually do appreciate it, this oh, oh, this uh back. inside knowledge well, what if scenario <laughs> yeah no we've we've known for a while we've we we've, we've been saying we've we've been pretty lax lately on uh, on a mr adam lion he's he's like hasn't been really in the forefront 
Uh, well, he has been in in these like in the last episode at the very least. This the one episode, but you know that doesn't mean we can slack on him. Right. We got to get back to being a little aggressive towards him eventually. We got to go uh, I'm, back I'm, to our roots. I'm sure we'll do that in like some like episodes where he'll very obviously frustrate us like to no end. He'll just go back to his old ways. But right now it's just like, you know, it's he hasn't he hasn't been like really like being outwardly like bad. I mean, he's been narcissistic that last episode we did. Pretty narcissistic, but you know, who who can help being a little narcissistic? Yeah. But anyway, thank thank you Ryan Ribbity for like once again the shining a light on the plagues of this nation. Thank like you. Like Adam Lyon. Thank and you. So, and so that'll do it for this episode. Uh we you know, we had a lot of laughs here. But, we learned a little uh, something. Next ep- yeah, we um we explored yet another episode of of my gym partners a monkey it's gonna be so good next episode we're gonna be covering the episode glazed and confused which is not actually listed on the boomerang app so wait yeah good luck with that lost episode it's not a lost episode it's uh, just it's just not on the boomerang app for some reason it's not it's, it's just not on the, it's it's, it's 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 a it's a like a, a special it's like a d- double like episode like long Ooh. double oh. episode length so like 20 minutes worth well that's something to look forward to i i mean i don't know it's it, it does it's not it's like a almost half hour long special that like isn't really advertised and stuff it's not even on the boomerang app yeah sounds fun I mean, sounds great all right well anyway y'all um Thank you for listening. Yep, this has been My Gym Partners, a podcast. Thank you once again. Uh, Lucy will be back next time. Uh, uh, and Niall, I'm sorry to say, but, you know, you, you can't, like, join us again. Uh, yeah, I want to I wanna putting... reschedule the catering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, listen, uh, just just go ahead and get me the... the... Yeah, all right. It... Sorry, what, what, Renee, what's up? Uh, so... Yeah, well, you're not coming back. Uh, sorry. Uh, next week. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, you're gonna be missing for a while. What? <laughs> well, what do you mean, Renee? <laughs> uh, psh, security. No. Activate the trap door. No, not yeah. again. I can't go back. I can't. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Renee. I am Gert. And that's Niall. That... And this has been my gym partners of podcast. See you later. Alligator. Don't say that.